Are you in charge of setting up the STEM space in your classroom? Have you been gifted a space with a random collection of supplies and you're not sure what to keep, what to toss, and what to purchase for the future? And let's talk about that pesky budget. Maybe you have a small budget, no budget at all, or some of you even have a huge budget. What should you purchase and how do you balance that budget between consumable and non-consumable items? Let's break down what you actually need for your STEM classroom and create a system that you can use year after year. Welcome to the Elementary STEM Coach Podcast, a show that'll help you with lesson ideas, systems, and actionable tips to apply to your classroom. I am your host, Naomi Meredith, a former classroom teacher turned current STEM teacher and coach. With over a decade of experience teaching and a master's degree in STEM leadership, I am here to coach you throughout the year to help you gain back more time to create an innovative experiences for your students. Grab your earbuds and let's get started. Before we get into the episode, I wanted to let you know of a special giveaway that I'm doing for the launch of this podcast. Make sure to listen to the end of this episode to see how you can easily enter. First is to list your current assets. Now, if you are starting with a blank canvas and you have absolutely nothing in your classroom, you can skip this step, but you might want to keep it in mind for next year. So don't write me off completely. First, pull out everything that you have in your classroom and organize all of your supplies with different categories. Have a category of all the things that you definitely want to keep, things that for sure you're definitely going to use in your classroom. Next, make a pile of things that you need to toss, items that are broken, things that are missing parts, things that are honestly too old that you know for sure you're not going to use, like an old cassette plate, <laughs> cassette tape player, CD player. You're definitely not going to use those. There are other options to play <laughs> those types of mediums. Also make a pile of things that you can donate and keep within the district. Maybe the items are actually too young for your students and you can gift them to other schools or preschools that are within your district, maybe even your ILC or SPED programs in your school. You might even have items that are actually too advanced for your students. They could be a possibility for an after-school club, but they actually might be better suited for your middle school or high school programs. I actually had a lot of these types of supplies when I entered my STEM space that was purchased by way back when STEM and tech teachers who were in my school. So the cool thing is I was able to donate those to our middle schools and they could definitely get more use out of them. So definitely assess the assets that you have in your classroom already. Once you have the items that you know you're definitely going to keep, think about what type of balance of materials do you have? Are you overloaded with robots? Are you overloaded with coding materials like I was? And are you in need of more building materials or maybe vice versa? Maybe you have a lot of makerspace items and don't have any robots at all. So definitely think about the balance because when you move forward with these supplies, this is going to help you keep in mind the types of lessons that you want to be planning. And again, you definitely want to have your lessons have a balance of all of these types of materials. Once you are aware of all of the assets that you definitely have in your classroom, next you need to think about creating a budget. Now budgets are really tricky, especially in the STEM space. Some teachers don't have a budget, some have a little bit, some have a lot, but there are opportunities to gather materials, whether you have money or not. Again, we will be talking about how to be creative with the funds you may or may not have. So first, you want to know how much money that you have available and when you actually need to spend that by. Some schools are really particular about when money needs to be spent at certain times of the year. Some are more flexible and let the funds carry over year after year. Find out what this means for your school and how and when you need to spend your budget. Once you have your budget set in place, this is a great opportunity to create donation opportunities. Amazon has a great selection for you to get started on a wish list. You can easily get that set up and keep adding items throughout the year, and you can share with your families and friends outside of your school. Donors Choose is also another great opportunity to create a grant for your classroom, and they will actually walk you through step-by-step -step how to write that, how, give you examples of what you could 
purchase for your classroom, and then they will actually purchase the items once it's fully funded and send them to your school. The process is so easy. I definitely had things funded in the past and now paying it forward into other classrooms and helping fund their projects as well. Another way that you can be flexible with your budget that actually won't cost you anything is to reach out to other STEM and science teachers within your district. They might have items that they have purchased already and they might be willing to let you borrow them for a unit. This can really help you as well to try things out if you do or do not actually wanna buy them. You might also have items that another teacher would love to try as well and you guys can do a little bit of a swap. I have a few friends in my district where we do this and it's such a great opportunity to help out their students so they have enough supplies and vice versa. The last suggestion actually goes into this next tip is to really be creative with materials. There are a lot of ways to build up the supplies in your classroom that doesn't cost anything. So first think about the consumables and non-consumables in your classroom. So what I mean by this is consumables are the things that once students use them, they are used up, you can't use them again. No matter what your budget is, you want to somehow get your hands on lots of tape. Kids love tape. I think it's the new pencils. I'm pretty sure kids eat tape. So definitely set aside a budget for that. I set limits on tape. I make baby tape rolls where I wrap a certain amount and wrap it around a popsicle stick and that's their tape limit. But I swear, I don't know where this tape goes. They love it. <laughs> so think about those consumable items that Students love, love, love tape and how you can have a budget and gather um, donations for that. Also have a balance with your non-consumable items. So sometimes you might want to purchase things that are a little bit more expensive, but you know are going to last a longer amount of time. My best example is when I'm thinking about robots and there are the Code and Go mice and the bee bots. They are very, very, very similar robots. They pretty much do the same thing. But I teach over 500 kids and the Code and Go mice that I have found are not the most durable when it comes to hundreds of kids using them. The Code and Go mice are awesome for a home robot and I suggest this for students if they love coding at home. This is a great robot. It's about 20 bucks or so. Definitely buy the Code and Go mice. But as an investment, I do purchase the B-Bots or even the Blue-Bots. The Blue-Bots are even cooler. They can connect to iPads using Bluetooth. So if you can invest in Blue-Bots and have iPads to connect, I definitely recommend those. But either way, the B-Bots and Blue-Bots are a great investment of my money. I know that they're going to last, they're durable, and also they don't use batteries. They have a rechargeable battery. So they are worth the investment. Also when purchasing, especially when it comes to those non-consumable items that will eventually become out of date, you don't always need a class set. Again, you don't need a class set. A big part of STEM is being able to collaborate and use those materials as a team. So if you're buying enough one for every kid, where is the collaboration? They're working on their own. So even think about how you could buy items where it works for about half of the class where they can work in pairs, even in thirds, could they work in groups of three, or even even smaller, how could they work in a station rotation? So maybe even having six of an item. Again, this is really awesome too if you're unsure about a material, if you would like to buy more or not, start small, start enough for where it could be a station rotation and build up from there. Definitely be creative. Don't buy a full class set. Don't go all in when you're first getting started. You might not even like the tool or might have found you don't even have time to use it. Another way to build up your materials is to ask for donations, but you can get very creative when you're asking for those donations. You know, at the beginning and end of the school years, when teachers are cleaning out their closets, teachers are retiring, they're getting rid of stuff, and you're so tempted to not look because you don't need anything. Okay, as a STEM teacher, go look you will be amazed by how many science supplies you will find from past science kit, math manipulatives that kids can build with, even lined paper, which is great for planning. You can find a ton of stuff in your own school building. Even send out an email. Some teachers have kids who are growing up and they want to get rid of a big bucket of Legos. Take them up on it. 
there are resources in your own building that you can definitely pull upon. If you know you're going to start a makerspace project, set out a box in your teacher's lounge and have teachers put in the boxes from their breakfast and lunch meals that they're heating up in the microwave and save that cardboard for your projects. That is the best cardboard to use, by the way. All kids can cut it with regular scissors. Another way that you can be creative when gathering your materials is have a Lego donation day. So have kids bring in those little snack bags filled with some basic Lego bricks. And if you have about 500 or so kids in your school, that's a lot of basic bricks that you can add to your collection. That would be a really cool thing to do for your back to school night. Have kids bring you in a snack size bag and maybe you give them a cool sticker in return or another little behavior incentive for thanking them for their donation. Also consider reaching out to local businesses. Businesses are looking for ways to have tax write-offs, and especially when it comes to STEM education, this is a big opportunity that businesses are just waiting for that connection. They might have materials from their company they would love to give you, or even if you write a Hill Grant opportunity that in return, they'll purchase items that you're looking for. There's, again, so many businesses who would love to help. They just don't know how. They're just waiting for those connection pieces. And finally, when you are building up the supplies in your STEM classroom, you want to plan ahead. You won't get everything that you want your first year. If you do, I want to come to your class because it would be amazing. But plan ahead. Have an ongoing list of supplies that you would love to have. This is great because, again, what if a business reaches out to you and they ask, what do you need? Then you have a list of things you already know that you would want and you can hand it over. Same with things with PTOs, with parents. So again, you are prepared with that list. Also for your planning ahead, plan for repairs. You're going to set all those systems, routines, and rules for all of the things in your classroom, but things will break. Now, less things will break if you do have those systems and routines and rules, and so you won't have as many repairs, but accidents happen, things break with wear and tear. So have, if you can, set aside a budget or what you're going to do if things do break, what is your plan for now that you have all of these tips and tricks for setting up your STEM space, let's recap of those four major ideas that we talked about. Number one, list those current assets. Number two, create a budget. Number three, be creative when gathering materials. And number four, plan ahead. Now that you have the system for setting up the supplies in your classroom that you can use year after year, you probably want to know, oh my gosh, what exactly do I need right now? Just tell me exactly the things I need to buy. I will tell you. <laughs> I actually went through and inventoried my whole classroom and created a spreadsheet of the must-have items that work well in the K-5 STEM space. And you can download that whole inventory spreadsheet for free. This will be linked in the show notes as well. The link you can grab that is naomimeredith.com slash STEM supply list. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I will chat with you in the next episode. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Elementary STEM Coach Podcast. Before you go, I want to tell you about an exclusive giveaway for you as a listener. If you take a screenshot of this episode, add to your Instagram stories, and tag me at Naomi Meredith underscore, you will be entered to win a bundle of prizes, which includes two months free to my STEM Teacher Ultimate Resource Membership, free access to my STEM Teacher 101 course and one free iPad case from Rugged. This giveaway will last from July 18th through 30th, 2022. If you're listening to this after this date, please still share. You never know. I still might send a fun freebie your way. Talk to you soon.